So when it comes to the AD carry role, everyone's normal assumptions about marksmen go something along the lines of auto attackers, champions who build a combination of attack damage, attack speed, crit chance, and go to town on everyone in the mid to late game with their rapid firepower, hence why they're called attack damage carry. Rather than relying on abilities, they rely on basic attacks to do the bulk of their damage. Though as far as the separation of classes goes, Marksman is the only conventional class with no subcategories. Fighters are divided into juggernauts and divers, slayers are organized by assassins and skirmishers, mages have three categories, burst, artillery, and battle, but Marksman, or ADCs as we like to call them, are pretty much the universal term for any champion with long range and high physical damage. That being said, the community has performed its own compartmentalization for ADCs, dividing them into three possible groups. Crit Damage, On Hit, and Caster Marksmen. In my focus video on the Marksmen class, I didn't really go too deep into them since they're not officially recognized, but I definitely plan to today. More specifically, I want to talk about the last group of ADCs, Caster Marksmen, for their surprisingly high popularity despite their very small roster size. I think there's a lot behind this archetype that people have predispositions of, but don't quite have a full understanding about it, so let's get started. First, let's actually segment the three groups because there's a lot of overlap. Crit damage users are your garden variety AD carries. They tend to have passable or decent laning phases due to a mixture of long range and strong neutral game. However, because they're still not quite at full power, they also have the worst mid game of the three, as by then they'll only have maybe 40 to 60% crit chance, not high enough to consistently land critical strikes, where most of their DPS comes from. Fortunately for them, if they make it past that hurdle, crit damage ADCs are the strongest in terms of raw damage and teamfight potential, as they can dish out massive damage especially against the other carry classes, fighters, slayers, and mages. Examples would be Jinx, Twitch, Caitlyn, and Tristana to name a few. The crit damage segment is naturally the largest in size, especially with the introduction of mythic items and the item systems rework overall in Season 11, though even prior to that they have been the reigning majority. Next is the on-hit marksman, which doesn't deviate too far from crit. They still have an identical purpose of auto-attacking as fast as they can, but instead of crit damage, they prioritize on-hit effects, aiming to land as many shots on you as they can, and capitalizing on their innate properties or various items that synergize accordingly, such as Blade of the Ruined King and Wit's End. Basically, they care more about quantity over quality. Kogma, Ash, Vayne, Callista, etc. make up this group. Usually, the easiest way to tell if the ADC is an on-hit marksman is if they build Gwinsu's Rageblade, which disables crit strikes but greatly boosts your on-hit damage. I would say this group has the most consistent spread of early, mid, and late game, and they're also the most notorious for being difficult to balance properly. Lastly but not least, we have Caster Marksmen, ADCs that do still weave in auto attacks but have abilities that take precedence, meaning most of the damage comes from their Q, W, E, and Ultimate, although they each have something that keeps their auto attack damage reasonably high. Back in the day, the easiest way to distinguish Caster ADCs was through Trinity Force, but with that no longer giving crit chance, it's pretty much never seen anymore. Lucian, Ezreal, Corky, and Samira comprise this group. They don't put that much emphasis into attack speed since they gamble on one or two ability rotations to finish the job. Aside from Ezreal though, everyone builds crit items because it's just convenient enough to do so. Because of this though, caster ADCs have been a really ambiguous gray area for many players. If we go by strict definition, then Ezreal is for all intents and purposes the only true caster marksman in the game, as he's the only champion who more or less doesn't need to auto attack at all. I mean he should, but he doesn't have to to do a lot of damage. Outside of him, we can make the assumption that any marksman who puts more than half of their damage output in their abilities counts as a caster ADC. Although that in and of itself might not be an accurate point, considering Lucian's a caster ADC, but his auto attacks are still where the damage comes from. That and Callista's Rend and Zaya's Root Caller are a core part of their burst combo, but neither of them would be considered casters either since you have to auto attack with them a lot. Alternatively, we can decide if they belong in this category based on playstyle. For example, Sivir has two builds, your standard crit damage build which takes advantage of a ricochet to splash on as many members of the enemy team as possible. Or sometimes you'd run into Sivers who build full lethality and spam Q over and over again. Because she can interchange between the two, she would likely be considered a hybrid. Jin builds crit items like any other marksman, but thanks to the unique scaling on his passive, his Q, W, and ultimate do significant damage in conjunction with his normal attacks, so he'd also be a hybrid. I know this sounds really cryptic, but when it comes to marksmen, the classification of each champion plays more like a spectrum than black and white categorization. But if I were to draw a hard line in the sand, the only real caster ADCs are Ezreal, Lucian, Samira, and Corky, since they have more equity in ability damage, not auto attacks. Unlike crit damage and on-hit marksmen, caster ADCs have incredibly strong mid games, as they don't need to build up a lot of attack speed or get crit chance. Mind you, they both help, but they're not essential. Crit scalers like Jinx, Caitlyn, and Twitch need multiple items in order to get to that 1v9 power spike, which would usually be 
Kraken Slayer, Boots, a Zeal item, and Infinity Edge, amounting to well over 10,000 gold. That means they won't have their chance to shine until probably later than 25 minutes. Caches like Ezreal and Lucian have enough firepower to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with mages, fighters, and slayers with usually just two items. Reason being, they're at that point where they have enough ability haste and bonus AD for their abilities to actually matter. And as many of you already know, AD casters are at their strongest in the mid-game. The general idea is that most carries do not start itemizing defensive options before their fifth item because they really need their core build to contribute any meaningful offensive pressure to a fight. That and defensive choices outside of shield bow are pretty bad on marksmen. Their options are usually Guardian Angel or Mob Malmortius, neither of which offer a good balance of offense and defense. Moreover, casters usually have a burst combo that allows them to output a lot of damage quickly in a short time frame, as in, they attack faster than crit damage or on-hit marksmen can at that point. Let's take a look at a normal rotation of someone like Lucian. Thanks to his passive Light Slinger, he strikes effectively 1.5 times after the press of an ability. A normal combo would look something like Auto Attack, W then Auto again, Q then Auto again, Dash then Auto again, then wrap it up with your ultimate. Let's remove the ultimate for a second and just look at his basic abilities. Lucian is able to land roughly 7 total instances of damage on you in just a few seconds. In order for any crit damage or on-hit marksman to apply that same relative damage, they need to have an attack speed of around 1.8 or higher, depending on the champion, which they won't have until like 4 items. Does that mean a 2-item Vayne or Kai'Sa loses to a 2-item Lucian or Ezreal? No, there are mechanics involved, but casters are notably stronger in the mid-game than your typical marksman. One other thing that sets them apart is that they all have a way to quickly relieve pressure. Ezreal's Arcane Shift, Lucian's Relentless Pursuit, Corky's Valkyrie, Samira's Wild Rush used to be an escape option, but they had to remove that when they realized how broken she was. To an extent, we can also throw in pre rework Graves, who was more or less a Lucian clone in terms of his abilities. A similar attribute of their mobility skill is also the potential to reduce its cooldown. Each shot of Lucian's Light Slinger reduces his Relentless Pursuit cooldown. Each cast of Mystic Shot reduces all of Ezreal's cooldowns by a second and a half, Samita's Wild Rush can have its cooldown reset upon takedown, and while Corgi's Valkyrie doesn't have either a reset or refund, he does have his package, which allows him two dashes as he can cast Valkyrie right after special delivery. The last one would be their respective ultimates, just damage, pure damage. Ezreal's ult, damage, Lucian's ult, damage, Corky's ult, damage, Samita's ult, too much damage. Other marksmen might have a utility ultimate or have a specific purpose for it. Utility ultimates include Varus, Ash, Sivir, Zaya. Specific purpose ults would be Caitlyn, Tristana, or Jin. Caster ultimates go along the lines of shoot anything that moves. Literally. Those three attributes, fast burst, quick reposition with cooldown refund, and damage ultimates are how I like to separate casters from other marksmen. There might be a few who have one or two of those traits, but not all of them. Okay, so not too long ago, I delved into Shapeshifters, which are a small group of champions in League that routinely see competitive play and have decent pick rates in solo queue whenever they're strong, yet there's so few of them in the game. Caster Marksmen are one and the same, if not more so. Ezreal is the most popular ADC in the game and has been ever since his existence. Lucian comes close too, he's been a consummate fan favorite since day one. It's very clear there's a dedicated fan base for Caster Marksmen. Sure, we may not be able to say the same for Corky, but Corky's kid's really janky. Even Samira, the newest release, quickly developed a cult following, and she's a dedicated caster as well. Let's also not forget the number of Graves one tricks. He's not considered a marksman anymore, but matches all three aspects of a caster marksman. High ability burst, quick reposition ability that reduces its cooldown with auto attacks, and big damage ultimate. There are a huge number of players that love playing casters, so why do we not see more of them? More dedicated casters anyway, not hybrids like Jin. It's because you can't design caster marksmen in League of Legends. I mean that in the most literal sense. There's nothing else you can make. Riot cannot design another true caster because they've already explored every idea. Ezreal is the only true caster because it's easy to design utility attacks for marksmen since their damage is predicated on their auto attacks. Therefore, you can figure out how their playstyle will be through their abilities. The other way around? Not so much. What is Ezreal's kit? A long range missile? Another long range missile? A blink? and then a long-range missile. Why do you think three of his abilities are just projectiles? Because how else can you make him a marksman? If you gave him non-projectile skill shot abilities, he would not be a marksman. He could be a fighter or physical damage mage. Lucian is also affected by this too. Even though he does build crit damage and attack speed, Q is a long-range missile, not a projectile, but still the same thing. W is a missile, E is mobility, and his ultimate is a barrage of missiles. Corgi is all magic damage, so honestly it's debatable if we can even call him a marksman. He's pretty much a mage at that point. That's just his yordle nature though. Now what about Samira? I'd be hard pressed to call her a marksman, like truthfully. 
She plays more like a diver than a marksman, in fact she performs better at melee range than she does from afar, as she does bonus magic damage with melee Q, and lest we forget her ultimate can only be used pretty much at point blank. That's the problem. You cannot design another caster ADC in League of Legends because there's only one way to design them. There's a very fine line between marksman and the other carry classes, fighter, mage, and slayer when it comes to designing abilities. Crossing that line is inevitable in this scenario. In shooting games, you might have a vast array of different weapons that do different things. Some guns might attack faster, others might be more portable, there are guns with more striking power but low rate of fire, some with incredible range and precision. You also have access to a variety of non-bullet weapons like grenade launchers, flamethrowers, flashbangs, etc. Even though FPS games all have the same premise of you just shooting stuff, you're allowed that diversity because most of them don't have a dedicated class system. League of Legends has so many classes that it's easy for a champion to accidentally leak into another class, which defeats the purpose of designing a caster marksman. At that point, you're just designing a ranged AD caster. A counter-argument can be made for the usage of different weaponry to give way for new options to casters. After all, not every ADC uses a bow or gun. We have Draven who throws axes, or Kogma who vomits his own acid. And there's also Ophelios and his five weapons. I'm gonna be honest, there's really no way to redesign Draven to be a caster without just being the same as Ezreal, and Kogma too. He's already close to being an artillery mage. I will admit that Ophelios came really close to being a second dedicated caster marksman though. I like what they did with his Crescendum being able to summon a turret, or Severon being a mini Urgot W. But in the end, Ophelios uses mostly auto attacks, with his different Qs being supplementary damage just like Kai's Q or Twitch's E. It's not the same. By this point, some of you may ask why not just say screw it and make an ADC with mage type abilities? Like why can't we make a physical damage Rise or Cassiopeia? First of all, Rise and Cassiopeia are pretty much magic damage AD carries, so making a physical caster in that same fashion would just be redundant. And second, that's a horrible idea. I'm sure all of you know this by now, but AP items give way more ability power than AD items give attack damage. Most AD champions can only reach about 400 to 500 attack damage maximum, while a lot of mages can reach 700 to 800 ability power. That's because AD champions have the benefit of auto attacking. When you have 400 or 500 AD, your auto attacks do a lot of damage, regardless of if you're an AD carry or not. Mages do zero damage with their auto attacks unless they're Lich Bane users, which is why they get more ability power in order to stay relevant in the late game. They're inherently balanced by their obligatory usage of abilities. The reason there are no ranged physical damage casters that aren't marksmen is because that would just break the game. They would have both extremely deadly abilities and extremely deadly auto attacks. Ezreal is balanced because he's all skill shots, and aside from his ultimate, he's purely single target. That was done intentionally because ranged AoE damage is the strongest form of damage in the game. Imagine if Vayne could apply silver bolts on more than one target at a time. You would go Runon's first item and start doing AoE% percent max health true damage all over the place. Actually, Yasuo and Yone are prime examples of what happens if you make AD casters. Not only do their auto attacks do like 500 damage, but their own abilities can wipe out entire teamfights. And they're not even ranged, they're melee champions. One more point to add to that, to make a caster ADC you need multiple sources of damage. If we go back to Vayne, there's a reason none of her abilities do meaningful damage. Her Q just causes her next attack to deal bonus damage. Her E actually does do a bit if you slam someone into a wall, 475 base plus 125% bonus AD but hardly anyone remembers how much damage it does because it's just supposed to be a knockback. And her ultimate is a buff. We can look at another ADC like Twitch. His Q doesn't do damage, his W doesn't do damage, and his ultimate is also just a buff. Contaminate is just meant to tack on a little extra damage after his targets run away. Marksmen don't have damaging abilities because all of their damage is focused on auto attacks. All four of Ezreal's abilities deal damage, and a lot of it, but to compensate he gets no benefit from building crit chance, so his auto attacks are average in power. Additionally, because he has to cast a lot of his abilities, he usually foregoes a lot of heavy attack damage items in favor of mana. I don't know, as I'm writing the script, I'm trying to think of every possible way you can design a true caster ADC like Ezreal, but the only thing I can think of that's balanced is just another Ezreal. You can't design caster ADCs in League of Legends, there are too many restrictions on it based on how the game is designed. Ezreal and Quirky were the best they could do. In fact, Quirky is just a worse version of Ezreal in almost every way. So it just goes to show you, your options are severely limited when trying to make one of them. I should also mention that they don't have and never will have good itemization. What separates AD Bruiser items from AD Carry items is crit chance. That is the only thing keeping them apart. All of Ezreal's items, Divine Sundra, Muramana, Cerildo's Grudge and such are frequently built by fighters and slayers. If you try to make dedicated AD caster items, what will end up happening is that melee champions will simply commandeer those items and just use it more efficiently. With all that said and done, I think the current direction Riot is taking with Marksman is the right way to go. 
What they did with Aphelios, Samira, Jin, and Senna is a healthy middle ground. They have a balanced combination of meaningful abilities and strong auto attacks, so that's probably what they should do going forward. What do you guys think? I personally believe there's no feasible way for Riot to make a caster marksman that just isn't another Ezreal clone, but if you thought of a concept that could prove me wrong, by all means, post in the comments. I'd be thoroughly impressed actually if you came up with an idea that's well designed and balanced, because I'm at my wit's end on this one. For the time being, if you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you left a thumbs up. Sub to the channel if you want to watch more content like this. Don't forget to follow me on my socials and join my Discord server, and check out my other discussion videos if you haven't yet. Until then though, thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next one. Take care.